So there are a lot of dice tray tutorials out there and I noticed they're usually split into two main groups. Those that are made from cheap boxes or picture frames you could buy and those that require a lot of really expensive woodworking tools. And don't get me wrong, nothing is wrong with either approach, but I had a very specific vision in mind that doesn't really fit the confinement of something you buy necessarily. And as well, most of the time when you buy these picture frames or the boxes themselves, they turn out very bulky and it's not exactly what I wanted. But I don't have all these woodworking tools or even the place to do that. So I figured out my own approach. All right, so I started off by taking measurements. <laughs> the horror, I know. I wanted this box to be able to hold seven sets of dice, so I laid the dice out exactly the way I pictured them in the box and took the measurements. I'm using 5mm thick balsa wood because it's not too thin that it will break and bend easily, but it's also not too thick that it would be too hard to cut with a box cutter. For the size of the bottom of the box, I decided on 5.5 inches by 7 inches. However, since I didn't have a wide enough piece, I decided to cut 1 inch strips and glue them together. I thought the more strips I had, the less noticeable it would be, and this turned out to be completely false, but since it's the bottom, it doesn't matter as much. I then added the sides of the box, which I randomly decided to be 1 inch tall. At this stage, it didn't matter to me that the corners were looking nice, because I knew I would modify them later. So, I let the final pieces extend over the edge and just cut off the excess. Now, to make the inserts that will divide each set, I cut six pieces of balsa wood that fit loosely inside. These pieces shouldn't be snug to accommodate for the thickness of the fabric we'll be adding later. Now, to make the cover of the box, also known as the tray, I learned my lesson and cut it from as few balsa pieces as I could. I made the sides one inch tall again, but this time I glued them on top of the piece I just made, because I wanted the top piece to look seamless. A quick side note, for the entire project I used both wood glue for the stronger and longer lasting bond, and I used super glue for the immediate grab so I could keep working without having to wait on the glue to dry. Inevitably, there will be gaps if you're cutting the wood by hand like me. It's nothing a generous amount of wood putty can fix though. When everything is all dried up, we can start making the corners look a lot nicer. Using some sandpaper I had lying around, I just sand the corner round, and it's so easy with this material. You don't have to do this step, but it just goes by in a matter of seconds, and I think it adds a really nice touch in the end. Besides the corners, I make sure to sand any outer part of the box and tray until they are silky smooth. You want the box to fit loosely inside the tray. It should fall right out without any issue. Leaving about one, one and a half millimeter of clearance on each side should probably do it. Now, after some test fitting, I realized it was a bit hard to get the box out of the tray when all is said and done, so I marked a half circle on the longer sides of the tray and cut them out, giving me a slot to grab the inner box through. It's a little bit boring as is, so to give it a bit more flair, I searched some cool designs to transfer to the top piece. There are plenty of easier ways to do this, but because I don't own a printer, I resorted to tracing over the design by putting the paper on a bright screen. As long as you don't use touch screen, you should be alright, cause oh boy, that was a not fun time for me. Okay, now that I've invented a new torture method and my design is ready, I tape it to the top and go over it with a sculpting tool. Balsa wood is so soft that this easily traces the design by leaving a groove behind it. Besides showing us the design, the groove was pretty helpful because I'm going to wood burn it in. I recommend when busting out the iron to give it a few passes on some scrap pieces of wood just to gauge how it behaves and get a feel for it. A wood burning pro I am not, but I have done this a couple of times to already know my own skill limitations. And so my advice here is to pick a design you can actually do. While a beautiful, intricate piece with many details would be cool, don't get me wrong, but if you're just starting out, maybe go for something a bit simpler. At least to me, I found that simple geometric shapes tend to be a bit easier to do than curvy lines. But hey, who am I to limit your artistic visions? Go out there and spread your wings and become a beautiful butterfly. Depending if you may be a normal human being who either already has wood stains in their house or doesn't have crippling social anxiety to stop them from going to the store, then the next step may be irrelevant to you. 
If it's not, my condolences. But yes, because I don't have any wood stain on me, I resorted to mixing oil paints with linseed oil to thin them down and make my own stain. Warning, using this method may result in obnoxiously long drying time, causing headache, agitation, and the constant need to check if it's dry with your finger. Cobble's Craft Ink will not be held responsible for any of the previously mentioned side effects. When applying the stains, you want to make sure you wipe off any excess with a piece of cloth or whatever you have in hand, because trust me, you don't want to leave it pulling on the wood. It'll be a sticky, hot mess. One eternity later. Now that everything is dry, we can add the final touches. Before adding in the felt, I wanted to add some extra padding for the tray. So I used thin EVA craft foam and cut it to size. Before gluing it in, however, I used it as a template to cut a piece of felt that will be glued on top of it. Then it was just a matter of measuring and cutting pieces of felt that will cover the inside nicely. I like to cover the sides as well to protect my precious shiny click clacks, uh, <clears throat> but it's not uh, necessary. To glue in the fabric and the foam, I used the wood glue I had close by, but speaking from experience, normal PVA works just fine. I did however made sure to evenly spread the glue on a thin layer. If it's too thick, it will soak into the fabric and we don't want it. Then glue the dividers we cut earlier to the felt and weigh it down with something worthless. When one side was dry, I then spread the glue on the other side and folded the fabric tightly. Then I could easily cut off any excess fabric with scissors. When testing the dividers, however, they protruded out a bit too much for my liking, so much that the wood was showing through. It is, however, pretty easy to cut them down to size, but I do recommend using a knife instead of scissors. At this point, I was too lazy to do any more measuring than I had to, so I just used the sets of dice to know where to glue the dividers in. Now for the cherry on top. Let's add some gold leafing for the dice we carved up front. To do this, I started by filling the space with a very thin layer of glue while not going over the burnt lines. I then covered everything with gold leafing and waited the full time for the glue to dry. When I was confident all the glue tacked up, I came back in with a stiff brush and a pointy tool and removed all the excess. Wherever there were areas where too much gold was removed, I came back in with a second layer and did the entire process again. When I was happy with it, I covered it with Mod Podge gloss to protect it and ensure it won't rub off. Now let's give it a quick test before the final shots. After giving it a few shakes and even holding it upside down, you can see it still holds strong and nothing falls out of place. And I was really happy, I wasn't expecting it, I thought I wouldn't have to put magnets in, and I don't like to do that. I think it ruins the look, but yeah, I'm super happy with how strong and sturdy this feels. I am going to take this to every one of my D&D games from now on. I love the random corners, I love the goldly thing, I love the usability and function it offers, and I am damn proud of it. Thank you for watching, till next time. Bye!